survivors and welcome to a moment of relief the first aid spray show where we can talk about anything we dang well please in fact in this episode we're talking about whatever you dang well please my name is Sai, and joining me this time it's burger time hello it's steve time hi <laughs> and yeah this one's a bit of a weird one i actually as we record this i don't know what the title of this uh, episode is but you can see whatever it is now the general gist was we were thinking about all the different plot holes all the different plot threads that have gone nowhere all the mysteries of resident evil and uh, let's talk about them so we put out some posts on social media and we asked some people for what they're you know itching to know what unanswered things in Resident Evil would they be most curious to see the answer to we don't actually have the answers of course but we can at least talk about them what we think they might be what we'd like to see out of them do we think we'll see a resolution to all of those things mm. uh, we won't necessarily get through everybody's questions unfortunately I can already guarantee that much but thank you to everyone who did respond on Twitter and Facebook so I guess let's roll into it with Resident Bio Evil who nice said name. 100% what happened with Alex Wesker living with the Burtons? It's the biggest setup possibly ever in the series, and almost a decade has passed since. Which, uh, did that not make you feel really horrible and old that it was a decade ago? Or, uh, like, is that right? Is it about or close to it, I guess? Um, Suddenly got the back pain. Too? Yeah, sorry, Steve. <laughs> uh, I know you're, you're a fan, like me, I, you're a big fan of Revelations 2, that I understand. How do you feel about this being sort of left? Uh, do you think we'll ever go back to it? I, If they ever decide, you know what, let's do a Revelations 3, it's got to be the, the story, right? Uh, mm. If they, for yeah. some reason, just go straight away and go, oh, we're going to do something else. Here's Terra Grigia 2, which <laughs> no one gives two Jeffs about. <laughs> it's going to be... Right. Yeah, it's going to disappoint people. Now... Capcom are known to do the whole curveball thing, but it's literally like Barry's got the sister of one of his nemesises in the mind of a child he's caring for in his house. You know, that, that's, a, that's a loaded gun. It's a, it's a big setup, as I said, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so, Bugs, how do you feel? So, I have probably the least experience with this game. Mm. Um, I've, only, I've only played through it with um, a friend one time, and then I watched James kind of play through it. And uh, I do am a fan, and I don't know. I was the Alex Wesker. Was that definitive? I thought it was kind of just like left in the ether, but heavily implied. There's two endings to Revelations Two. One is Barry dies on the island. Natalia gets her body, but she's still, you know, Alex takes over Natalia's body there and then, and she's stuck there. Mm -hmm. The alternative is that it's it's basically all but implied, like full on Chekhov's gun style, only in reverse. That mm -hmm. Alex has taken yeah. over. Natalia's mind, or is at least in some way a part of her. If it's two people, uh, yeah, yeah, whether or not it's yeah. Alex Wesker, that's certainly up for debate. But something has happened to Natalia's brain. <laughs> She's giving a bit of an evil look to the sure. camera. Mm. She's reading Kafka, right? I think at the end and that kind of stuff, and just generally being, you know, hashtag creepy child horror mm. video game standard stuff. Uh, it's a, it is an odd one because with Alex Wesker in particular, that itself was like a little plot detail that took years for them to go back to because it was a name that was listed in a file in the Resident Evil 5 DLC as the other surviving member of the Weskers. And everyone was like, okay, what is this? And uh, to your credit, Steve, as you say, they sort of curveballed it because I don't think anyone necessarily thought about the fact that it would be a sister of Albert Wesker, which was really That's clever right, yeah. and cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just to kill her off so fast and then be like, well, she's not actually dead because her consciousness or whatever maybe is in the is in the brain of a child steve what would you like to see happen here is it, you, you said revelations three but like give us a wider idea of that okay <sighs> you put me on the spot i, yeah. I feel like <laughs> uh obviously alex's big thing at the time in two and i suppose in resistance is fear so mm. some kind of I don't know, psychological torture thing going down. But how she manages to implicate... I imagine it's got to be Barry, Moira and Polly are like either involved heavily or her first three victims. Right. And something has to happen. I don't know how you have a biohazard event from that, though. I don't even know how Barry's going to see, oh, yeah, I want to study biochemistry. And doesn't at least go... <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So, but it's something on his lines. Uh, she's now what? She's like 11 in Revelations 2. So, physically, she's what, 20 or 9, 21, something like that. So, she's old yes. enough to have, you know, buggered off to college and learnt something and become like an evil scientist on campus. 
Or not she's, an evil scientist anymore. She's actually, know? thinking about it, she'll be in her 30s now because Revelations 2 is set in 2011. Oh, my so bones, she'll be in her, Yeah, so she'll be in her 30s. So, yeah, we are now at the prime point right. if they wanted to pick it up in 2023 for yeah. her to become a big grown-up I, I have it. I have it. Go for it. I have the game. Here it is. It's, it's, uh, um... Sorry, my cat's being an asshole. <laughs> um, so, it's The Winter's Child... Rose. And oh, Rosemary. Alex, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ro- Rosemary and Alex Wesker uh, as the antagonist to her, like a, a superpower, like girl boss. That's, <laughs> yeah. the, that's it. It's it's going to be it's going to be Alex Wesker as the final boss of the Rose. Uh, Do you know what? Of the Rose video game. I don't hate it in the sense that they're both like women <laughs> have got an extra consciousness in their brain because, in a, you know, Rose went through that with Ethan a little bit. So it's like... Yeah. It, there's some weird similarities like it's I hadn't thought about yeah. it before but absolutely and then yeah. it's like then it's like you know then there's this moment somewhere in the game where they're both in each other's minds and they like meet each other as just and then the personas meet each other <laughs> and then there's like this weird standoff like that, that feels like, like does, does, does Rose, Rose do this and then yeah. all of a sudden Ethan comes out and goes F- you, you crazy bitch <laughs> like... well, that's that's Persona 3 <laughs> <laughs> also apologies uh, we'll need to bleep that yeah, yeah thanks um <laughs> Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, I hadn't thought about it that way. That's cool. But in talking about it being not like a big global biohazard event, this, like, if it was a Revelations 3 or a follow up or a spin off of some kind, mm. and considering it originated from a spin off, makes me think that they're not going to suddenly drag and drop it into a Resident Evil no. 9 or a 10. Exactly. Um, yeah. no. I think this could be one of the prime examples for we need a horror. We need a small focused <laughs> horror game, um, maybe starring the Burtons. Maybe this is a way to be like. Barry gets one more game and then he's done because he's an old man now. It's time to like... He and Moira get yeah. to team up or something in a small sort of localised environment. They have the the moral sort of like quandary of facing down, uh, you know, an adopted daughter and sister, you know, all these all these years later. Maybe maybe not set in 2023 because Barry will be... <laughs> I don't know how old he is now, like 70 something, I guess. But somewhere along the yeah. line, it seems Still like the that's... Revolver. Yeah, it's, right. It's funny. It's funny you mentioned Barry, Sai, because our next question. From yeah, a friend of mine from the show, um, fan, fan of Itchy Painty, Ferdinand Van Den Hock, is asking, "Where's Barry?" And where is Barry? I think I, where is Barry? Barry. Hashtag. Where's Barry? Where's Barry? Yeah, these were very um, deliberately put together. Obviously, I wanted to do one followed by the other, like ignoring the Natalia plotline or whatever. I guess the question yeah. really here is like, do we want to see him in another game? Do we want to see him in another starring role? Do we want to see him as a man in the chair even at least once? I always had that kind of, I don't know, something in me was like, I'd like to see him being the guy in Chris's ear at least once. Yeah. Uh, before the end of the, before so the, end of the I, series, if you want to call you know. I, I don't think he'd be the guy in Chris's ear. If anybody, he's the guy in Jill's ear. Fair. That's very fair. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Uh... Um, so, but I, I don't know. I, I think maybe, maybe he's in the cinematic. I don't, I don't know mm. that I need Barry. Barry never really struck me as the guy to sit in the chair. Like mm. there's a reason that the 65 year old man went to go rescue his own daughter, mm. you know, right. like, yeah. Uh, I think when Barry retires, I think he retires hard and then kind of just is there as like a, an emotional support Barry. Like <laughs> if we're talking, if we're talking overall plot arcs, he's the Joe has a crisis of faith at some point and, and goes to Barry's house and they have a moment on the porch, you know, like that's, yeah, that's the amount like of that. Barry yeah. I would need of just like where he's like, well, Jill, you're like, you know, the master of unlocking this puzzle, you know, or yeah. There's, there's a throwback. You know you know the conversation that they yeah, have. Of course. Um, I mean, like after they've had like a grill with Barry's family, right? They're just sitting yeah. on the stoop. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, just, I'm just picturing Nicole <laughs> yeah. Tompkins Jill talking to Barry Jerd's Barry. Just yep. the full, like, clash of two different yeah. styles. That's you, you can see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you can see it. Um, yeah, Bergs, I don't know if you've... It's have the you dining seen... room. <laughs> yeah, come to the dining Where room. Where are we? Have you seen Death Island yet? Because we're talking about this off the back of the latest CGI film, which has got, uh, you know, the core cast, except Barry. Um, which, so you might be right in the sense that he's kind of... He's outside of the core group. It would have been nice... To, we talked about it on the podcast. It would have been nice to have seen him be the guy in the helicopter at the end or something as a nice little nod. Yeah. Even if he's not directly involved in the events. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I have not seen Death Island, but uh, I also don't care about spoilers, so we can we're free to talk about right. it. That's fine. Um, I mean, Barry not being in it isn't a spoiler. It wasn't in yeah. the trailers. Or yeah, anything. Right. that's not. So, like, then that's the thing is is I think about that, and again, from my perspective of like, you know, Barry, like your, the experiences we have with Barry are are not all positive, right? We we don't see him in, in a way of like. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't need Barry anymore. I know Sherwin's gonna blame me for this. Um, I think, I think Barry's one of the characters where I, I don't need to see a return. Fair enough. Uh, Steve, you, you, you've died over there. Um, how would you feel about Barry return? Uh, what would you like to see? Okay, um, pie in the sky, right? If they follow an action-focused game, like uh, say four or five, I suppose, and replace currency with something else, like I don't know scrap mechanical parts you want barry as the guy who makes the guns uh oh, you know, lean into like his weapon that. expert guy oh okay yeah yeah, yeah i take that nope that's 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 barry if he the, if he's, he's an old guy let's say he literally stays as like 65 mm-hmm. 70 year old barry and he literally is not like i can't fight no more but mm-hmm. I, I can make a really nice gun for you if you can't get kendo to do it barry would be the perfect guy and he could do like parody as parodies of his re1 lines in some way sure uh, yeah no that's it Mm. He's he's the merchant person yeah. in the Rosemary in game. Nine. All that, and, yeah, like yeah. In, 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 in Resident Evil now. Nine. Not necessarily and, like, like and, give him gems, you know, give him gun parts right, or some something. other stuff. He, like you find parts that he can use uh, or, make or things that he likes. Yeah. Maybe not even weapons you can use, but like guns that you know, for all we know, it's magic powers that you're buying actual upgrades for. Uh I don't know. <laughs> we we don't know. We, <laughs> it, um but but maybe she doesn't even know that it's significant, right? She has no idea who Barry is. She wasn't that would also that be well cool. Her time. Yeah, mm. that would be really. But cool. we know it's Barry. We know it's well, Barry because we... it's got he's got the beard. Do you know what? Would yeah. be maybe even the holster. Yeah. What would be really good about that is that they just kind of like they answer it right at the end. Like one of them mentions Chris, and they're like, "Oh, you know Chris? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know <laughs> something like that." Like, the whole game, they don't know that they're one degree of separation from each other. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, fun. Great, great. Like Beard, got a red coat on. There's various things in the background that if you were a proper nerd, you'd go, hang on a minute. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, it's just like, oh, yeah, you know, Chris. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> oh, I used to we, work, we used to work together. <laughs> yeah. tell him, tell him, <laughs> next time you see him, tell him Barry said hi. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Okay, cool. So we're on a roll with, um, you know, where our characters are at. You know, that was a popular question we were presented with. Um, so Paul Moore asked, why did Mia join the connection and what happened to Billy? So that's a, that's a bit of a two-part there. Steve, what's your thinking on Mia's backstory? Because we don't really know much about Mia other than she works for evil conglomerate and is some kind of bioweapon babysitter. And that's about it. And she's from Texas. That's about all we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from a driver's from license. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like they have the opportunity if they go back to Mia as a character and don't just like shelve the winters completely. She mm. can be basically Ada done right. We can figure out motivations for it and reasons because okay, you, yeah. you don't really join a bioterrorist organization and go yeah i'll tell you what the life risks are pretty bad but the benefits <laughs> you know yeah, so there's got to be some kind of thing there even if it's just something as simple as i, I had a rough childhood and i really hate people right. for a while you know something stupid it can be but i believe she's basically a chance to be what ada could never be now because mia is still morally ambiguous to the point where some people think she's still a villain whereas i think she's just basically rosemary is her entire focus now anything else can mm-hmm. go yeah yeah uh it can, yeah. could also be take her put her in a present day situation make her the protagonist and she has to reconcile and try and stop something that her past is, a tie, is tied to theoretically that's a really cool yeah. idea that lets us explore that past because i think there are obviously lots of questions still surrounding the winter's saga which we're you know we're almost certainly never going to get answers to now because it's concluded um and mia yeah is absolutely certainly a big one like what was even all this about you just find out that she's part of a, a terrorist organization essentially bergs any interest in seeing more of this in the series uh, actually, I think this is one of the main plot points of Resident Evil 9. That would be cool. Uh, it would be really yeah. surprising. They would have outright lied is to it... us. But you know what? I'd be okay with it. <laughs> I'd be okay with it. Um, it wouldn't be the first time that they've outright lied to us. I guess so. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I think that uh, I think that that's part of it. Hmm. 
Like, if it's the Rosemary game, that you will be dumb to believe <laughs> that. is just booking a whole me is, game right now. <laughs> that's it. We're, um, so, but, like, listen, we've, we've wrapped them all up so far. It's all it's all feasible. Okay. You can do it in a 12-hour game. Okay. In that uh, 12 hours, how does, these games are done in three. <laughs> in that case, how does Billy factor into this, Res- <laughs> this Resident Evil 9? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Billy. Okay. Um, <laughs> is the agent that is her bodyguard. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You okay. don't know it. It's like, you don't even realize it because like he's like, there's, he's wearing sleeves the whole time. You know, different, you know, <laughs> so, like, obviously, obviously uh, like older gentleman because mm-hmm. uh, he'd be in his 60s or so, right? In 2023. He's uh, only like 21 in our in he is in his early 20s, yeah. So that So would... if he's 1996 would put him at 47? Mm. Yes. 48. That's he could right. potentially yeah. have color in his hair. Late yeah. late fi- or late 40s, early 50s, like mm-hmm. a silver like a silver fox situation. <laughs> um and there's like smarmy back and forth you like hear about like but it's all code names, right? It's all yeah, code okay. names. Actually, my um, name's William, <laughs> as opposed to Billy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm and that's Silver how, Leech. Or, or there's a there's a moment <laughs> where he leech. takes an attack for you, and it like ruins the sleeve to his blazer, and you <laughs> yeah. see the tattoo up his arm, and there's no other recognition for it. Yes. I hate it. <laughs> a, f- a faded mother love, just like oh yeah, I'm a queen yeah, fan, don't just, you know? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, uh, and that's it. That's that's how Billy's in the game. And obviously, if Rosemary gave me as part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, where has Billy been for 20-something years? What happened after zero? Like, if he's, not a, if he's not a shambling corpse and didn't, and didn't get nuked, I yeah. imagine Umbrella snatched him. I feel like he's probably been in like some Umbrella black site for 40 years or 20 mm. years. It, the best possible outcome is like what happened to Leon, what happened to Sherry, and the you know U.S. government got him instead, and they still went, right. You know right. too much, but we'll make use of you. But we're gonna yeah. But I think, and that's and that yeah. No, I hear that. I think he's black sided. I don't think he's. I don't think he had a happy ending because it, it just doesn't fit his character for me. Like it's tragedy's a, written into him. Yeah, it's a shame really because Resident Evil series, for all of its darkness and all of its tragic stories, we don't really have any tragic stories, really that affect the main playable characters mm. it would be really cool for them just to address that and be like yeah billy's dead like for that would be like a massive <laughs> like oh my goodness like maybe not now but at one point right. years ago if they'd have dropped a fire file into some lab somewhere um that they use his right. body for something yeah. it would have been really devastating because we would have played as him in the past and so it's, so yeah, it's a shame in a way that they haven't done that. I know the Billy stands out there are losing their minds at that. But I mean, I, I still stand by I the like, idea. I like yeah. Billy. Don't get me wrong. I, like I don't Billy. want him to die. Yeah, but... no. I stand by your idea about the government taking him in and using him. Obviously, we talked about that before. Uh, Adam brought up the fact that he should have been the protagonist of Resident Evil Four, really, and it just, it just like, it fits so perfectly. Yeah. Um, but alas, I, personally for me. I, I, we're going to have this where it's like there's no reason I can't avoid upsetting some fans I don't care about seeing Billy back like, he served his purpose he's a great character but at this point you're just bringing him back for the sake of fan service I don't feel like it would offer anything to the story to his story mm. and not every character has to come back around because it makes the world feel smaller you know, like Resident Evil has yeah. a massive cast perhaps too much so on the broader scope of things people have only appeared once but Billy is not one of those guys I think that needs to come back. Death Island post credit scene, you'll see Rebecca go into her house and she's been sat there going, hey, <laughs> living bike. out there, hiding for the rest of his life with Rebecca Chambers. Yeah. Sure, if you like. <laughs> um, the other part of this question, uh, did Carlos join BSAA with Jill? So that is uh, uh, Ahmed Abdul Majid Mahid actually said uh, what happened to Billy after I zero as well. So a popular, a popular question. But yes, yeah. did also ask, what that happened to Carlos? Uh, they assumed maybe they joined the BSAA with Jill um, and either left or were killed. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Steve, how would you feel about you know where Carlos is at? I know it's what, a similar question, really. No, what I would love for Carlos is a you know uh, Jeff Jeff Shine did a great job and yeah, I, I yeah, want that absolutely. character back. But yes. I think it'd be a nice character pivot shift if he goes from being a soldier to basically being not on like a terror save person. 
like an NGO, like more about helping people than shooting things. Don't get me wrong, man knows how to fight and does like a falcon punch like the best of him, but it would be a great change for his character. Like going from soldier yeah. man, which let's be fair, most of the bloody cast are at this point, to right. a rescuer. Like, uh, you know, he could be a bloody firefighter in some like dingy American town as an ex protagonist. That would work for me. Just make him a, a rescuer or a like someone who helps people as opposed to fights things. I That's... agree with that completely. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Bergs, how would you how would you slot Billy back into the franchise if you had to? Billy or Carlos? Uh, sorry, Carlos. Sorry. Yeah, I mean Carlos. Um, sorry, but yeah. So Rosemary's going to need somebody to teach her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I, 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 I like Carlos a lot, and um, honestly, I, <laughs> my head canon is as follows: is that uh, Carlos and Jill acted on the obvious chemistry there, enlisted in the DSA together, mm. dated for a while, and had a brutal breakup. <laughs> drama in the and resident evil universe <laughs> and then that's why and that's why you don't see carlos ever again that's why like, he went they to don't talk but be a firefighter like he yeah he went he went to be a firefighter in, <laughs> in his hometown yeah and marry his high school sweetheart in a in what town? hallmark high movie school? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something something barry stoop yeah um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, do you know what? I completely agree with these takes because Carlos's law, I guess, may be a little bit complex now to sort of say what's from the original game and what's from the remake. But in the original game, like, and I think this isn't a remake, the UBCS soldiers are a bunch of people that were on death row, essentially, that Umbrella scooped in yeah. and went, you can work for us or, you know, you can stay here and die, basically. So they were like, okay, I guess we'll do that now. Um, and part of that, according to the original law, is that Carlos got facial reconstruction essentially to, you know, hide from all of his crimes so that he could be a different person. And possibly even that Carlos Oliveira is not actually his name as well. He's basically got a whole new identity. Yeah. So it's, I always thought like immediately after the Raccoon City incident where he's, that's his first time with that face, you know, if you like, and with that name. He can go and start a new life after that. Like all the things yeah. he's seen, he would probably just be like, nah, F this, I'm out. Like that, I'm especially. Out, Nemesis, like a 1999 version of Carlos, would be like, no, I'm just going to hide away from the world, which is completely fair considering all the stuff that he's been through before the outbreak and during. But remake outbreak, yeah, he seems like the kind of guy, right? Remake um, Carlos, sorry, Carlos. feels like the guy who would not shy away from it and be like, well, looks like I got a lot of stuff to do. Um, and yeah, I think it would be nicer to add to the roster of support characters rather than soldier men because he already kind of shares a voice actor with Chris Redfield. So if you mm. age him up, really, what's the difference between those two characters too much? Really? Exactly. So you need yeah. to define those differences other than big hair. <laughs> glorious hair. I say keep the big glorious hair. hair. I, say, I say keep the glorious hair. A wild hair. Mane. I, So do I. Yes, exactly. That is his <laughs> defining character trait. So... Uh. Um, Jack Tagger asks uh, another question about a character where was Steve's body taken and how was it disposed of assuming that Wesker is telling the truth it's referring to Steve Burnside not our very own Steve I can see your body right now but Steve what happened to Senor Burnside see I was under the impression that he was like with HCF or well, I guess what would become Neo Umbrella in 6 and he's like quote unquote part of the C-Virus yes thought... his body was used to create the C-Virus I think yeah so I mean Again, maybe he's in a vault next to Billy. Uh, you know, <laughs> not to tube. be cynical. I, I feel like that will be it. They'd keep you know alive. Because, I mean, it's implied that he's not dead in some of Wesker's report, right? Or am I going crazy? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so they could easily just have like him in some kind of tank and they basically occasionally drain him out for when they need TV, you know? Not, not television. <laughs> T. Veronica. TV. Uh, you know, yeah. But I, could, I, I, I feel like... As much as I dislike the character in the game, just completely killing him off and throwing him away is, is pointless. And in mm. some way, shape, or form, he's at least a component of the C-Virus, which admittedly is only in one game. But I don't see him being dead and gone. Whether he's ever revisited again is another question. But... Yeah, I was going to say, I don't see a grand return from him at this point, considering no. he turned into a giant green monster and then, yeah, as you say, had, had his body used for further experiments. Yeah, short of being like, come back as a megalomaniacal villain, like crazy revenge Goodness. story. There is nothing. <laughs> like, well, I mean, the boy had nothing to live for at the end. Like, and if he's been yeah, tortured no, for twenty years, done. and if he's in his semi conscious, I'd be a bit miffed. So you know, on that regard, yeah, there we go. Steve Burnside I... for Resident Evil Nine is the evil villain. He's wearing a trench coat and all the rest of it. 
I actually kind of want it though. Like now that you've said it, like the idea of him coming back and specifically targeting Claire as well in some twisted, weird way and putting her through that tragedy sounds awful in the best way. But obviously, Steve Burnside, for as much as like people hate the character, there are also plenty of people that really are big fans of him. And it would be such a knife twist for them to bring him back and be like, yeah, he's an evil villain now. <laughs> he's not the boyish hearts rob that you remember. Uh, Bergs, what would you do with Steve Burnside? Or would you do anything? Because do we just leave it? I think maybe you'd leave it, but... Mm. So there's, there, there's there's always a couple boss fights in a Resident Evil game. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think... I think Steve Burnside can be one of the like Steve said. It's good to have him come back, uh, but not like, not a primary antagonist. He's, he's a Batores Mendez. Re- yeah, he's yeah, like the he's secondary tertiary dude. Yeah, uh, he has captured Claire Redfield, and Rosemary must save her from, <laughs> from that. Poor Claire in prison again. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, oh. it's on Rockford Island too, but like. <laughs> Do we, wait, 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 Berg, do you mean Rockford Island as well, or do you mean Rockford Island 2, as in he's so traumatized he's made a sequel? <laughs> Fuck. Mm. So, I don't know, he could he could have recreated it oh, to God. his memory, oh, which my would make it all twisted. This is boxing off it to work. Just <laughs> be, be the island, but having decayed for, you know, 30 years? <laughs> He's he starts dressing like Alfred Ashford. <laughs> yes! this full circle again. <laughs> but but just just Alfred Ashford. That's yeah, it. not Alexia. He wears, we he just wears the on. jacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but that ties up. That ties it all back. Yeah, he looks he in the mirror and around he with thinks this. he's two people. It's just yeah. a set of curtains and a wig. <laughs> a sniper rifle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm not sure that's the answer that they were looking for, but I like it, so. (laughs) Okay, T-Virus GTZ asks, uh, probably, and Steve, you sort of alluded to this, and this is my favourite question, what is the point of Ada Wong? (laughs) Who does she work for? What are our mo- what are her motivations? Pretty much everything about her character, I guess. <laughs> Which, do you know what? Yeah, basically, I've already addressed this point that like that's my big issue. I have no interest in the character because very clearly to me, they have no plans for her. That's been evident since 2005. <laughs> We're 20 years later <laughs> and know almost nothing new about her. Uh, Bergs. You know, what would you do so, with Ada? What is the ultimate sort of destination for Ada Wong's character? So if you Ada, Ada, Ada Wong works for an organization. Um, it's an acronym. It's a really long one. The acronym is MacGuffin. <laughs> um, uh, it's like M-C-G-F-N, MacGuffin. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> Like really, it's like that's whole. That's her point. It's like she's she's there to reference something for the plot to move forward in several yeah. games. Yeah. Um, she is not even she doesn't even have a character, and that's why I think a lot of like, um, like a lot of people give the character itself, like the, the for the performers that play the character itself, like a lot of flack, and not realizing that like you can only work with what you're given, and like yeah, Ada, oh, Ada Wong is a plot device and not not an actual character. Um, she never gives anything, like, and it's not compelling to me as a. Mm. But I'm also on record as being the hater of Resident Evil Two, so <laughs> you know, whatever. That's true. First stage I, heel. Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, I'm also part of this uh, little heel stable because yeah, I I've made it known that I do not care for Ada Wong. Um, I'd be I'd be perfectly fine if she never came back. If I wanted to be really harsh, you basically could swap Ada Wong out post Resident Evil 2 for files, as you say, and you just get the information you need from some scrap of paper, basically, like she to move the plot along. Like you say, there is really no difference, save uh, a bit of paper can't throw you a rocket launcher, I guess. Steve, what would you do with Ada Wong? What's the end point for the character in your eyes? Is there one? God, I feel like that boat's been missed, hasn't it? Like, I don't hate Ada, yeah. for, for reference, everybody. I, I'm on, like, I'm okay with International Woman of Mystery, Ada Wong. But the same token, there ain't much mystery. She just turns up, buggers off with whatever the MacGuffin of the week is, and bugs off. Yeah. She also yeah, occasionally, yeah. like, uh, controversial moments, like, but RE6 was probably the best time for Ada, because she, she's helping Sherry. She The whole bit with the Uzi and the tanks and stuff, I was totally in the moment there. That was cool. 
but mm. she's had no real payoff. We don't know who she really works for anymore or what mm. her motivations are. And it, it, There's nothing they can really answer that to without it ruining something. Like, you know, if she secretly, secretly yeah. works with connections, that undermines stuff that's happened in RE4 and RE2. If she's still in league with Wesker, which she isn't, that undermines stuff in RE4 and, I guess, RE5. Mm. Uh, so she her- really, I guess she's working for herself, but to what end? Like, what is what? What is she trying to do? Like, I mean, what could she possibly be trying to do? Nikolai's motivation is money. If Ada's is that simple, it's crap, but I could believe it. Mm. If she's working for, if 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 the FBI thing is a double bluff in remake two, for example, and she actually does in some way, shape, or form, uh, way, shape or form, work as like um, a government spook for the US, that I could believe potentially because then she's there yeah. sabotaging all these corporations, and she has a purpose and reason. But she also has to maintain anonymity and be incognito. So like a, mm. you know, a mercenary for hire is actually working for the US government. That's the only way I see it, maybe. And that's the only thing most of my brain pulling stuff. PMC. Mm. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. like, is it the Bo- Jason Bourne was that, wasn't he, in one of those films? I'm, I'm not. Right. Yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. My only problem with that, and I really like the idea, but that starts to fall apart a little bit for me, and maybe you could overlook it, is that uh, at some point, as you said, Resident Evil 6, we find out that she's working with Simmons and stuff like that. Mm. And that's where he develops his fascination. If she's working for the government by that point and that close to him and the family and they discover that the family is this e- even a thing that runs the world behind the scenes, mm. they're probably going to be more focused on figuring that out. Why have they not continued that bit? Okay. But whatever, right. you know. Hear me out, hear me out. Right, Simmons, as we all know, colossal creep when it comes to Ada Wong. Maybe she discovers a little bit about his... Um, Incel hyperfixation, being generous. <laughs> yep. And yep. that's what causes her to part ways and go full blown self mercenary. Mm-hmm. I mean, we haven't really seen her since then. She's in, like, what is it? Damnation. And she basically, quote unquote, sort of saves the day a little. You know, uh, she Don't fights. Know what she does. She, 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 she basically fights a, a world leader and survives. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Steve is uh, doing a thumbs up for audio listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. That would be the only way I'd reconcile it. Is literally she finds out that he's an incel weirdo and thinks, oh, okay, I, I quit. Yeah, I'm done. Ta, bye. Other than that, yeah. she's just what answer can you give that's going to satisfy anybody? Precisely. I I do like the U.S. government thing, and it's one of my sort of dreams for Resident Evil to actually take down the U.S. like you can take down the government in some way because they are the big bad mm. and they always kind of have been really. Um, but it plus seems to be funny. Me, like, plus, it would be funny. Hear me out with Leon like, as well. Leon then finds out they've been working for the same company the entire time. <laughs> yeah <laughs> all he needed to do was go to HR and be like is there an Ada Wong that works here and they'll be like oh no he's here's her number here's her uh, details <laughs> um, <laughs> why didn't I think of that <laughs> right it feels Printed. to me like they made it really obvious that she's a lone wolf working mm. for herself thing that's the problem like, yeah as you say I don't, I don't think there is an answer I don't think we'll ever get one uh, it speaks to the wider problem of how they're going to retire all these, you know, fifty and sixty year old characters when we get to that point anyway. Mm. Um, but it won't matter eventually because we'll have to move on because age will take these characters away from us in theory. Um, speaking of Resident Evil Four, our good friend um, and guest panelist for the show, Retina, asks, "What was in the bag in the original Resident Evil Four? This is referencing Steve. Do you know about the bag? Can you explain the bag better than I can? I bet you can." <sighs> Okay, right. In Resident Evil 4, on the island, near the end, you go through like basically a prison cell section, which you could argue looks a lot like some of the prisons in Revelations 2 now. Yeah. Uh, and there is a dumpster with a little sack. Can we like play a VT clip for the YouTube oh. viewers? Yeah, yeah, we can yeah, do that. Yeah, um, uh, with thermals on, you know, the thermal scope, it's got heat. So it's definitely something that's alive. Uh, and you attack it, it goes from vibrating violently to dead. Uh, for my money... I think it's just some poor sod the kidnapped. Like, mm. or maybe discarded regenerator parts. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's very Silent Hilly, though, and it's in a very Silent Hilly area. It is, it is. Ada finds it as well in separate ways, doesn't she? Because I think she can just look at it and be like, that's disgusting. Yeah, she just shuts it. the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I agree with you. I think it's just essentially experiment awful. Bergs, what's in the bag? 
What's in the bag? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> oh. oh, no wonder we haven't seen her in the Resident Evil universe. Been in a bag this entire time. Um, no, uh, what's in the bag is a Big Mac and fries. <laughs> uh, it's alive. It is. Okay. Uh, it's, an, it's, an, it's obviously an experiment. It's body yeah. parts. It's like... It's 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 not even an actual experiment. It's a scientist side project that kind of just backfired, yeah. and they're just throwing it in the side outside project, trash. Yeah. It's mittens. Salazar's cat. <laughs> oh, Sadler did not approve. No. Yeah, he's more of a dog person. Yeah, I think this is one of those things, isn't it? Where it's like, I get that people want an answer, but the answer is it's a mystery, and that's why it's there. <laughs> yeah. It's spooky. Like you know, it's fine. Like I would. Yeah, it's a, it's at least breaks us up from what happened to this character question, so I do appreciate right. the, the very weird question that I was. That made me go, bag. oh yeah, I forgot about the mysterious bag. Um, speaking of mysterious objects in the Resident Evil universe, though, uh, Treya Noll, I hope I'm saying that correctly, asked, what exactly is the Any Alpha Parasite? Uh, this is, uh, yeah, an interesting part of the lore that we've not talked about too much um i guess there is some interesting stuff to potentially talk about regarding the remakes mm. as it goes with the sort of original lore if you like uh yeah just there was a parasite and we popped it onto lisa trevor and it gave us the g virus that's basically all we know about it and if you put it on a tyrant it creates nemesis or yes. it can create nemesis uh steve what are your thoughts on the any alpha parasite i'm 100 on board with the classic verse revisitation of it all if I'm honest, because it's a nice way of putting everything together in a messed up kind of way. Like, it mm. being a... I, I know, obviously, there's probably some some real big lore buffs that might be annoyed by the idea that they're retconning who knows what about the Plagueis. But Umbrella reverse engineering it, and then it being put into Lisa, then puts, like, you know, basically a proto-form knockoff of the last Plagueis there, and that's what generates G, which lets us have a little bit more continuity. And it means that this thing that was once like a part of a separate game that some people go, you know, RE4 could be part of its own thing. It doesn't actually have to be part of Resident Evil. It's now part of Resident Evil. Because, you know, I mean, it's the Umbrella knockoff. I would love to see a game where we see that again in some way, shape or form. And we see like Mm. maybe them just loose on their own without a host body or something. It's, you know, artificial Plagueis, I think, is a very interesting concept. And it's cool that it becomes like what Nemesis is, because Nemesis is still, even with the busted nose variant, one of the most iconic looking and mm. best engineered and coded monsters in the series when he's allowed to do yeah. more than roam one city block. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's uh, also, but... I just don't mean to uh, wrap no, no, no. but in, um, I don't know how canonical certain things in Operation Raccoon City are, but there's also the any yes. beta as well beta. there. That looks mm. a lot more insectoid and spiderish. But it could also, you know, it, 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 if you squint in a certain way, you could argue it looks even more like a plagger. Yeah. Um, yeah. So mm. that being an iterative thing as well, I find fascinating that there's like a whole line potentially of them basically trying to replicate this thing because I don't know, they're scared of Salazar, scared of Sadler. Why didn't they just take it? Is the question that really That's, bothers me. I think that is the the issue with the law that most people have is just like if Umbrella had access to Las Plagas, uh, why didn't they do more with it? Why is everyone right. still alive in the Lost Illuminati? Wouldn't yeah. they have just dropped all the USS in and killed everyone and taken the parasite to experiment on it? It, it is a little odd, yeah. That uh, same with Osmond going, and the mold, like, really. When you think about it, we're yes, we're talking, we're talking a company that can cover up a nuclear attack in the United States. Exactly. Like they can afford to just disappear a remote village in Spain. Yeah, it it is a big leap of logic, isn't it, Bergs? How do you feel about the uh, the Nemesis parasite? Um. I mirror what y'all are add on it. I kind of, especially given what the beta looks like, I don't even think you need to squint that hard. No, it really just see. looks. I don't remember what those things are called, but yeah, they're in Remake Four, aren't they? The little spidery mm-hmm. ones in the castle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. I don't. I couldn't say what it is. It's probably some prehistoric dinosaur sneeze. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't. I don't hate the character history. Yeah, yeah, and the more of like I do like that Plagueis part of it. You know, we talked about it before. It's like the ancient sort of, and it links it to the you know the progenitor in that way. Ancient viruses is where it all comes from. I love that part of mm. Resident Evil. 
is unfortunate that it is a bit like we have to really make any sense if Umbrella has this and doesn't have the rest of it or whatever if they can find a reason for that then great by all means uh, right. yeah it's even if they try and in the remake timeline if you want to call it that or whatever's going on with the law mm. if and if they do basically outright say yeah Nemesis happened because of Plagueis if they're really that specific about it it's like yeah what huh okay I, I mean Luis would have maybe brought it with him right as a an end, yes, he's I an guess. umbrella guy now, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I don't know how well the timelines fit. Really, mm. that's the question. Because I mean, Luis is how old? I, I'm not sure. How mm. old would he have been in '98? Uh, would he have had access to said item to give to Umbrella? And then for some reason they don't go. Oh, this is very fascinating. We'll not chase that up. Yeah, this one you've sent us will do. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Maybe Spencer's really polite, as it turns out, because he didn't investigate the mold, <laughs> as you said, you know, like he met uh, Miranda and knew what she was up to, but he was like, nah, I'm not going to bother. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe he's just mates with Sadler and he's like, you know what, I'm going to stay out of your business. You give us a little bit of that, we'll give you a little bit of this. It'll be fine. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we've been misunderstanding Spencer this entire time. I mean, with all <laughs> these like greater villains have to have to coordinate, right? Yeah, right. Really? That, yeah. yeah, they got their own Discord and everything. <laughs> Uh, they meet up at um, Wesker's Volcano Island once a year for Villain Con. <laughs> God, I was just running like villain, the Summit Villain Axis of Evil. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Coming uh, soon, BioCon. Bring your own T Abyss vials. <laughs> God, no, yeah, not right. going there. No, listen, uh, listen. You, there's workshops on how to recruit henchmen and retain <laughs> evil scientists. Like. Uh. Yeah, how to stop your henchmen from injecting themselves with viruses. <laughs> it's very low Securing success Securing the loyalty of your George secret Trevor's layer how architect. George Trevor's guide to elaborate trap making. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Featuring your tutor, George Trevor. Uh, he's not alive, like... he's just delirious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh. He's been delirious for 20 years. Uh, so the last question we're going to answer today from Emily Bowden over on Facebook asked why does nobody in universe seem to remember or care that there's a gigantic satellite array capable of destroying cities that's currently controlled by who knows it's a really good question that I'd never considered before this is obviously uh, as far as I can tell alluding to Resident Evil Revelations the destruction of Terra Grigia which we did uh, touch on briefly earlier um, I forget actually who has access to it at the time who fires that off Steve you, you is it okay. the BSAA okay. or it, it was Revelations uh, is confusing it was FPC right the Regia Solus yes. and yes. it's a, basically a microwave beam but also I believe they show it entering re-entry like some I think like you know um, Quint or whatever force it to basically descend into the atmosphere and break up and burn ah. so while it would have been great to have a giant satellite laser in that particular instance. There is also another unnamed giant satellite laser they use to obliterate Alexia, not Alexia, Excella in RE5. Yes. Yeah. So I guess they're just a, a common dime a dozen occurrence in the Resident Evil universe. Yeah. yeah. Every. The, the discount every satellite laser beam. Government has one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. Bergs, how do you feel about uh, Resident Evil in space? Could have been the opportunity to go shut down the satellite, right? Um. <laughs> Listen, I've been looking for an opportunity to make this about Yakuza. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. You're a uh, uh, but, uh, but if Ichiban gets a space laser, it doesn't surprise me um, yeah, fair. that people in Resident Evil have one too. <laughs> like, that's just, like, Ichiban's a self made billionaire, uh, and he gets a space laser. Uh, yeah, so I guess so, that you're right. Maybe that's just what happens in video games. Yeah. Congratulations, you went over that extra zero. Here's your satellite beam. <laughs> Like, use Wesker it wisely. Yeah. Wesker you get one. one. Why did he not use it? Like, huh. oh, he didn't. He what? You have to be in a certain place. You have like, to like decide, like, I suppose, this, and that's book heavy. Book the time slot. Yeah, you so need someone to do the. Oh yeah, the you need a co-op partner, you. of course. Wesker would never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's logistical problems. <laughs> you tried purchasing <laughs> microwave laser fuel lately? <laughs> <laughs> not in 2009. Jeez, economy was all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, no, fair enough. I mean, yeah, it's a really interesting point that there is more that I went to Revelations and as you say, Steve, there is still another one from RE5, let alone... Is there one in Dead Aim as well? I think there is, isn't there? Yes. Like, there's a big orbital blast Chinese. 
That's the Chinese. Yes, the Chinese definitely. have one. Yes, so they're just out there in Resident Evil. Um, yeah, as Emily says, under the control of who knows what. I guess if it's Resident Evil and their giant death beam from the sky, they might actually all be owned by the family. Uh, let's face it, mm. if they're still canon. Um, so let's wrap all of that up together. Let's do a family and space laser <laughs> Revelations three, starring the birds. I got it. I got it back in. <laughs> okay. Tie it back in. Okay. Uh, we have our scene at the Burton household. Oh, okay. No. Right? <laughs> and, go. um, like, there's that smile, and then, then they go, well, should we, should we take care of business? And, uh, Jill goes, yeah, I, I guess it's that time, isn't it? <laughs> and then, uh, they step away, and they go downstairs, then there's a secret basement in the Burton household. High-tech center screens all around <laughs> space lasers pointed and you find out at the is this happening concurrently to the big climax fight the other half of the game the big climax fight between rosemary and alexa at the end of it and the space lasers are going to be the ones that solve the, the save the day it's gonna it's gonna g give photosynthesis to rose super photosynthesis to rose is the plan okay, okay. so the answer is the, the barry burton is in control of the satellite beam. That's what we've apparently right. decided. <laughs> so he is the man in the chair. I was right. Yeah, 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 there it is. We, we, we brought it back. We gave, we gave Barry his chair. He hits the space laser button. Nice. Now Sherman can't say I hate Barry. <laughs> Give him an ultimate death ray. He'll be fine. He'll be happy. <laughs> well, that is certainly not the note that I thought we were going to conclude this conversation on. But... Uh, Sure, this was definitely a, a thing that we have recorded now. Uh, let us know in the comments below uh, <laughs> your most pressing Resident Evil mysteries and unanswered plot threads, what you would do with some of the stuff that we talked about and some stuff that we haven't talked about. In case you want to do a part two, maybe let us know what we should cover. Um, as always, episodes of A Moment of Relief also come to YouTube if you're listening to this on a podcast feed and vice versa. They also come to Patreon early, as does most of our content. So check us out at patreon.com forward slash FA Spray Pod for a chance to support First Aid Spray and hear and see things early. Uh, Berger, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Capcom, call me. <laughs> Steve, thank you for joining me. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for watching and listening. And of course, have a good week. Have a good week. Bye, I love you.